I'm making a frame for Quiet Contemplation of a Sandwich. Normally when I make frames, I make them out of birch ply, 12mm birch ply, which I stain black and then varnish. I think the aesthetic of it's quite nice, particularly with the natural wood on top there. In this case though, the customer has asked for it to be all natural oak. So I've been to the wood store and bought a plank of uh, white American oak, kiln dried. I bought uh, kiln dried because it needs to be nice and stable. If not, here's one that wasn't kiln dried and dried out in my workshop and uh, a nasty crack, which we don't want. This is nominally PIR, that's planed all round. It's 150 by 25. The 25 though is actually only 20 and the 150 is only 145 because they measure it before they plane it. So you just have to be a bit careful not to get caught out by that one. What I'm going to have to watch out for as well with natural wood is uh, it's going to the States after air conditioning. Wood can shrink and expand with the different humidity levels. And that, could, of course, can affect the uh, gear wheel spacing and cause jamming. So I do have a solution for that, which I'll show you later. Now, though, this is 20 mils. I want it to be 12.2. So I'm going to either have to cut it or plane it. I think in this case I'll plane it because by the time I've sawn a piece off, there'll really be nothing left to worry about. So uh, I'll go along now and uh, get this planed and machined and come back to you. Here goes. If you're serious about using hardwoods, then a planer thicknesser is uh, pretty much an essential bit of kit. Um, this one I bought second hand and it's proved very useful. It'll plane right down to three mils um, if I use a sledge and uh, ten mils without one. Very noisy though, yeah, but uh, it prepares the wood very nicely for the uh, CNC machine. This machine's the first one I bought. It was a big investment at the time, took a lot of thinking about, but it's, I've been really pleased with it. It's really uh, opened up opportunities for things that I've been able to do. Right, here's the piece of oak, nicely machined out now. As you can see, these are the two sides of the frame, and there's quite big holes in there. These holes, are I made an insert for them. The insert, if I put it the right way around, just pops in there. This is a 12mm birch ply insert, so it fits flush. And as you can see, the axle holes are in there. So even if the wood does move, it doesn't affect the spacing of the axles, of course, in there. The other advantage is I can take this out. So when I'm making the automata, if I want to reorganise anything, I can just pop this out, do it, and then put it back without having to pull the whole frame apart. I'll fix it in place with a set screw, a 6mm set, set screw, which will hold it in place, and so it can always be taken apart later if necessary. Right, I'll get on now with uh, cutting the tabs on here, and uh, we'll look at gluing it all together. Over to the little bandsaw now. This is a Shepak. These small bandsaws are really useful uh, first machines to get. They're very versatile. You can use different blades for different cuts and uh, say a great purchase. Another fantastic purchase was this little one inch sander, which is really useful for shaping and also for cutting off tabs and things if you put a coarse belt in it. Really noisy though and uh, really quite dusty as well. I need extraction. This is a much larger one. I used to have one that was a little bit smaller than this, but the moat was also smaller, and I found that if you pressed hard enough, you could actually stop the belt going round. But this one works very well. Okay, in case you think everything's always straightforward, I hit a bit of a snag. Um, this mortise in here is supposed to be 6 mil. It's only... 5.9 which is not far out it's, it's a small bit and hard wood you get a bit of deviation so that's 5.9 millimeters but the tenon part is 6.3 the problem is this is quite hard wood and 6.3 does not fit into 
5.9. So, a bit of handwork is involved to get this tenon to fit now. So, move over to the trusty carving tools. What we'll do is just mark it first. Just move things to one side, shall we? So I can see where I've been. Now we just need to cut the ends across there. Good, about half a millimetre. Then I'm using a small, I think it's 60 degree carving tool here on just peel a little bit of the wood off. See if we can get it to fit. This is inside the joint, so it's not visible, fortunately. It's all quite time consuming though. There's always quite a lot of this fettling involved. Let's see how that fits now. This end, we need a little bit. Oh, right. Very hard wood. Good, see how it fits now. Better. Excellent. Great. Just need to do the other three tenons now, and then we can get on with it. Time to glue the frame together now. I've got some uh, clamps that I made specially to do this. What I'm going to do is glue the two base, the base together, but I'm going to leave the top loose because I've not finished machining that yet, but I'll put it on to make sure the sides are parallel. We'll do this with PVA glue, very strong. Nice to work with, I quite like this glue. Get it on. Nice and thick, make sure I get it the right way around. And get the place in part. Use my fingers to scrape the excess off there. It's one side to make sure I get this all orientated right. If I put them the wrong sides in, then we have to start again. place the top in place to get the sides parallel. Now we'll put the clamps on. These are made of beech wood with six millimeter screw through it. Just clamp it down. Side, just do it gently to start with. Right on the end, otherwise the parts will bow slightly. Possibly anyway. Now then, just need to make sure that it's perpendicular. Perfect, yes. Alright, put a bit of pressure on now. Check that it's still see just that insert fits in there so I can put the frame together without any worry about getting the uh, camshafts in because these are loose so I'm going to drill a hole through this end because it's going to have a back plate on it and then put a set screw in and that'll just 
clamp that in place, a big set screw, 6mm, so it can be taken out. Good. Looking nice. Now I'll leave that for a couple of hours to dry, pretty solid, and then we'll have another look. I've drilled and tapped holes now to hold these inserts in place. So there is the 6mm grub screw, set screw. So that just screws into there. Let's put it on his top. Screw it down. Insert in place. Okay now, good. So there is the uh, frame ready for uh, varnishing. The top's yet to be finished. I've got to paint the top. There are the inserts firmly placed. But if I uh, release the set screw then they will easily pop out so it's quite easy to get in the mechanism while I'm making it and the top still takes off. Great, on we go.